So uh, my name's Lauren Hoffman. I'm from Albert Einstein College of Medicine at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx. And today I'll be presenting on the biomarkers in Hidradenitis separativa. So here are our authors, relevant conflict of interests. So I'll jump right in. We conducted a literature review for any published serum biomarkers in HS. And we tried to see if these biomarkers were related to disease severity. We also, um, did a reanalysis of serum proteomic data from a study by Block et al. So with collaborators from Janssen, here we go. With collaborators from Janssen, here is the paper from which we took our proteomic data. And they used a SOMASCAN platform to identify their proteins. Okay, here we go. They had 17 patients who had moderate to severe HS, and they compared this to 10 healthy controls. So with the Suarina, for the suarez farinas lab, we actually did a reanalysis of the serum proteomic data and tried to determine if there were significantly expressed proteins that were greater than 1.5 fold change uh, with a false discovery rate of less than 0.05. And we also looked at uh, patients who had been treated with ustinokinumab to see if there were any changes in the serum proteomic um, disease uh, in their serum proteome. So Michelle Lowe's presented this slide earlier today, which kind of outlines what we propose to be the pathogenesis of HS. And she commented on the role of complements and immunoglobulins in the role of um, pathogenesis, but I'd just like to say that in our literature re review, we found a number of serum biomarkers that were dysregulated in the um, serum of HS patients, and these are all listed in the abstract, but in the interest of time today, I'd just like to review a few of these serum biomarkers and how they might be related to this uh, proposed pathogenesis. So we'll start with S100, A8, A9, or calprotectin. And I'd also like to point out that in the following slides, you'll see that we've replotted some of the data that we pulled from the literature just to highlight some of the points we wanted to make. So here, um, in a study by Wayland et al., they found that calprotectin was significantly elevated compared to healthy controls, and they actually determined that at a level of 680 nanograms per milliliter, this was both sensitive and specific for diagnosing HS. When they looked at the levels of calprotectin, uh, um, according to Hurley stage, they did not find that there was a significant difference uh, measuring through this way of measuring disease severity. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about calprotectin today. It's a neutrophil protein that's released during inflammation. Um, it's actually used as a marker to, uh, to diagnose inflammatory bowel disease, and it promotes apoptosis and inflammatory responses, and it does this by mediating the innate immune response by recruiting and activating immune cells, especially in sterile immunity. It is also involved in activating the NF-kappa-beta pathway and leads to the elevation of a number of serum uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines listed here. And that actually brings me to our next set of serum biomarkers that I'd like to discuss. So we found that there were a number of cytokines elevated in HS, and in this talk, I'll talk or highlight a little bit more about IL-32 and IL-6. So I'll start with IL-32. And Thomi et al. found that HS patients had a significantly elevated level of IL-32 compared to healthy, um, healthy controls, and they also found that IL-32 was elevated compared to other inflammatory skin disorders. So um, these included psoriasis and atopic dermatitis. So a little bit about IL-32. It's a relatively novel cytokine. It's not found in rodents, and there are nine distinct isoforms in which you can measure, which can be measured in the serum. So a number of cytokines and immune mediators, and actually the microbial products themselves have been found to release IL-32, or rather make IL-32, or lead to the secretion of IL-32 through a number of immune cells. And we thought it was interesting that intracellularly, IL-32 actually has a number of roles controlling infectious disease, but when it's secreted, it amplifies the immune response, leading to a number of pro-inflammatory cytokines. 
And this um, brings me to the next set of cytokines I'd like to discuss. I think these three you are all more familiar with. So we see across the board here that these authors found that TNF, IL-17, and IL-6 were all elevated in HS patients compared to healthy controls. The next thing we tried to look at were, did these authors find if these cytokines were elevated compared to disease severity? So uh, Matusiak found that, or rather did not find that TNF levels were elevated um, when correlated to disease severity. However, IL-17 was found to be elevated in more severe patients, and this was also true for um, IL-6. So moving on to the next serum biomarker, I'd like to talk about CRP. And a number of, of studies have shown that CRP has been elevated in HS patients. And it, actually, a number of cytokines can induce um, the secretion of, of CRP. And one of these is IL-6, which we have just discussed and been discussed many times today. So I'll tell you a little bit about CRP. I think we all are familiar with its role as an inflammatory marker. It also can activate complement, which we were interested in. Um, I think that its role in uh, leading to downstream inflammation is less known, and CRP has actually been identified um, as pathogenic in a number of age-related disorders, some of which are listed here. So a little bit more about uh, CRP does this. It actually can directly uh, stimulate inflammation through the NF-kappa beta pathway, and it indirectly can lead to fibrosis and the inhibition of cell signaling or um, cell proliferation through the TGF beta and this MAD3 pathway. And we thought this was interesting because so many patients in late stage disease present with this fibrotic, scarring, burnt out looking disease. So maybe this has a role. The next biomarker I'd like to discuss is hepcidin, which is also related to IL-6 because IL-6 has been found to be um, to stimulate hepcidin, and hepcidin itself has been identified to be important in anemia of chronic disease, a point of which I'll clarify in a minute or so. So in our reanalysis, we found that hepcidin had a three-fold increase, um, was found to be three-fold increase compared to normal patients. However, this was just above at our, our level of significance. So we were interested, but we wanted to look into this a little bit more. When we, um, uh, when we plotted hepcidin against disease severity using the modified sartorius score, we actually found that when we looked at it this way, hepcidin was correlated with a more severe, um, with more severe disease. So I mentioned that hepcidin does play a role in anemia of chronic disease, and our group actually or, um, presented last year at the SID that patients with more severe disease, those in early stage three, seem to have a lower hemoglobin level or more severe anemia compared to patients in early stage disease. And the last uh, point I'd like to discuss today is what we found in patients who had responded to the anti-IL-1223 treatment and how this changed their biomarker of disease, or their serum proteomic signature. So in responders, we found that this treatment did not resolve the disease proteomic signature. And there was actually little overlap between the HS disease proteomic signature and the proteins that were changed with treatment. So when we were discussing this, we came up with the hypothesis that it's perhaps the driver of inflammation in HS is not impacted by, the, by this treatment. So this brings me to uh, our conclusion here. These are the biomarkers that I've discussed today, and I've tried to put them in context with each other. But in summary, we did not find that there was one unique diagnostic serum biomarker in HS yet. Uh, no, we also found that while a number of biomarkers are elevated with disease severity, we haven't found that these have changed the approach to disease management yet either. So more work to be done. And finally, uh, I would like to mention that it's important to do the basic science research because when we determine things like, or when we when we look into the serum biomarkers, we can help unravel the disease pathogenesis, and it can also help us determine some novel therapeutic targets. So 
in conclusion, uh, thank you tremendously to Dr. Suarez Farinas, Dr. Lewis Tomlin, and Olga from Mount Sinai who helped us with the reanalysis of our proteomic data. And thank you for the opportunity to speak today.